What drives the unemployment rate? For a long time, the economists thought that unemployment rate is only driven by the shocks that reduce the demand for goods, or the types of shocks that lead to recessions. It was until 1982 when some economists argued that at least part of the unemployment could be driven by a different type of shock, named sectoral reallocation shocks. These are the types of shocks that change the match between consumers' preferences and firms' production technology. Let me give you an example. We have been witnessing a giant wave of store closure in the retail industry over the past few years, mainly driven by the rise of e-commerce, which has changed people's preferences towards doing their shoppings online rather than going to stores. So these shocks change how workers should be allocated across industries. In this case, the retail industry doesn't need as many workers, while the technology industry desperately needs to hire more workers. Now, a simple solution would have been that workers move from the losing industries, in this case the retail industry, to the winning industries, such as the technology industry. But there is a problem. The laid-off workers do not have the skills required by the firms in the winning industries. So even though there is a huge demand for workers in the winning industries, those who have been laid off by the firms in the losing industries cannot instantaneously move to those industries. And this leads to higher unemployment. In this project, we introduce a measure for the sectoral reallocation shocks using data from the stock market. We show that this measure can not only predict future unemployment over different horizons, but also has a remarkable predictive power for the stock market return. Specifically, when our measure indicates greater misalignment between unemployed workers and vacant job positions, it is very likely that the market return will be lower in the near future. We compare the predictive power of our indicator with a set of well-known stock market predictors and show that our measure outperforms pretty much all of these variables. But why do we observe this negative relationship between these shocks and future market returns? We offer a theoretical model that can justify this. We then calibrate our model using real data and let it simulate the economy. We show that our model produces the same predictive pattern as we observe in our analysis. In this simulated economy, we show that the reallocation shocks increase the total cost of hiring in the economy, and this leads to lower return to hiring, and consequently to lower future stock market return. Our measure can serve as a simple yet powerful tool for policymakers to mitigate future mismatch between job vacancies and the unemployed workers. This can be, for instance, through an adaptive educational policy that reduces training costs for workers that need to be reallocated or by mitigating the search costs for industries that need to fill their vacancies. By identifying when and how such policies need to be adopted, our measure can help prevent a rise in future unemployment and a decline in future stock market returns.